All right, resuming the video. These cars were just too, uh, they were looking too good to resist. Heavy precipitation is in your area. Say what now? Heavy precipitation is in your area. Does that mean rain? That was a very fancy way to say rain. <laughs> That's what my mom Heavy said. precipitation. What's up, YouTube? Uh, we're just gonna redo the video that we shot already. Cal getting some shots. Yeah, we just need to move inside the car. Are you sure I can get in? I, I've, I've never sat inside a car this nice before. Whatever. Are you sure it's okay? Stay hydrated. Oh! You need to vacuum out the inside. You know, once you have a two-seater, for a bit money, you're not going to vacuum nearly as much. Because just like, stuff can't really be nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and like, all you have to do is just constantly dump this thing out. And that's what The you only reason this has stuff on it now is because uh, when I got out at work, this morning I stepped in a bunch of crap and just jumped in the car because I was cold. No. Anyway. So I guess we'll just start. I mean, we recorded this video before. And I kind of want to do it again because it would be more concise anyway. So I'm going to just start from... I guess I should start by giving y'all what I was looking for first. So first of all, um, we'll get into this more in depth later. But I had to get out of the M3 kind of unexpectedly. Oh, we do have to do that video. <laughs> yeah. I bet so, they're wondering. Right. So the first priority for me was low depreciation. It had to be something that held its value well because I didn't have the money saved up to jump into like a GT3 or a turbo or any of that stuff yet. So I had to have something that wasn't going to depreciate and I can build some equity in it or at least not lose my entire behind on it while I'm paying on it and then, you know, transition into something else a little later. How you move? Um, Latch on the side, right here. Ah. Manual, right? It's a race car. It's car's too fancy. Because race car. I look like I'm sitting way far back. Yeah. So that was that. Main thing was depreciation. Um, I gotta say my next criteria was it had to look good because I was I like but the thing about the M3 was that it looked really good, but I kinda wanted something that stood out a little bit more this time. Like I don't like to be too flashy, but I like to look I like it to look classy and stand out a little bit. Um and then after that, you know, I, I love, y'all know how I am, I love handling, I'll, I'll go to the track. Um, I've always loved Porsche, y'all know that if you watch the channel at all. And I guess last on my list probably was speed, like outright speed. Simply for the fact that I live in Atlanta, I'm always in traffic. And D can actually attest to this, though his Z06 is faster than the M3 and the Cayman, he's never completely lost me in traffic because it's Not always... Yeah, because it's always just so much going on with between curves and mm -hmm. having to get between stuff. So, and this car, like Calvin has jumped in, is already super comfortable. We were driving on the way here. We were hitting it pretty good, and I still get a little bit nervous. Like when you floor the Z all the way, I don't think y'all understand. When you put your foot to that Z, yeah. it puts the fear of God in you, and you're yeah. like, boy, if yeah, right. I mess up even a little bit, right? Several people are dying, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so you just don't really want to do that, you know what I'm saying? So you kind of take it easy. I mean, the the, the the good thing is, even the Z at like 75% is keeping up, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that's a good thing, but right. So it was something that I was comfortable in, something I liked. And if y'all know, I did the Porsche Experience Center when I first moved to Atlanta, and this was the car road, the Cayman GTS. So I've been in love with it since then, so here we are. Now, aside from all that stuff, I guess I'll tell you about the stuff I looked at and why I didn't get it. And I'll just start from the least likely contenders and go on up. I'm going to turn this down because it's a little warm. So, be some AC in it. All right. So, I guess the least likely contender was probably the Hellcat. Hellcat. Probably the Hellcat. Um, it was cool. I feel like its only benefit is that it was fast. And like I said, being fast was like low on my list because I'm not, I don't race like that. I'm not really like into I don't have to be like, oh, I can beat you. I'm not that guy. So the Hellcat's only benefit being that it was fast kind of was a bad thing for me. The interior wasn't that great. I don't think they look that great. The Challenger looks better than the Charger, but I don't, I don't think they look that great. Um, the value doesn't hold all that great. And at the end of the day, it's still just a Charger. So I'm going to interject the story here because when he went to look at the Charger, um, I actually happen to be riding by. Fortunately, me and him live close to each other now, and we live so close that we can just happen to be crossing each other's paths, right. which is amazing, by the way. Right. So I was riding by, I looked over, and he was in the, his wife's Honda at that point, but the way he had parked 
at the lot, I knew it was him. Even though it was just a Honda, I'm like, mm, only Calvin parts like that. I called him. <laughs> I was like, bruh, you at the you at the Audi dealership? He said, yep. So we pulled over the Audi dealership had the Hellcat. So we pull up, my wife in the car. So we pull up, we hop out, we talk or whatever. And eventually the they, they pull up the Hellcat to the front for him to, you know, check it out and take it for a test drive or whatever. So my wife's sitting in my car and she looks over and she sees it. And so once he is about to test drive it, you know, I'm, I get back in the car and go home because, you know, I just happen to be passing by anyway. So I get back in the car and she was like, because keep in mind, we're, we're at the Audi lot. So I don't think she knew what you were getting or whatever. Right. She was like, is that a Dodge? I was like, yes, <laughs> She was like, is that a Challenger? I was like, no, it's a Charger. She was like, tell him not to get that. <laughs> so it just, it, it, it didn't look yeah. like him at all. He, he looked all out of place in it. Yeah. No. And it was like, from a performance standpoint, it's fast, the transmission is decent, handle is not great, um, steering feel is not great. It's just one of those cars that if you are an American car guy and you like that muscle car feeling, that's for you. And I'm not that guy. Like, I gotta say, I feel like anybody can tell you that pop that car doesn't really fit me. Like, my wife didn't like it, his wife didn't like it, he didn't like it, I didn't like it. So after I drove it, it was kind of like one of those things like, yeah, you can have these keys back like right now. Like, I don't even want to go talk numbers. I don't do none of that. Just take the keys and y'all can keep it. And you still would've got walked. See the tall guy video. Mm, no, nah, not check. really. Not really. Oh, he, he did. With, with, like without 8,000 people in the car, <laughs> you probably would've been a much closer race. But, um, anyway, next would be, what, what would we say is next that was, Looks like the Z01. Z01 is a little higher. Um, probably the F Type. Okay, yeah. The Jaguar F Type R. So the Jaguar F Type R, I loved it since it came out. It looks good. Sounds good. It's a Jag. It has a certain prestige to it. Biggest issue with it was that a the interior is cramped, and I'm short, but the interior is cramped, and b the depreciation is pretty ugly. So that car starts life at what 110? Some can we 115, 120? Um, I think that's the SVR. Is that? The R's are there high? I know the R's can't get up there. I think it's big convertibles and stuff, but oh, okay. They can get up there. I know they can touch a hundred grand easily. So you're talking about a hundred grand and then two years old, the cars are worth 60. Like selling for 60, which means they traded in for like 50 or 55. And then on top of that, if you go and look for a higher mileage one, they're selling for 45, which means they traded in for like 40, 35. So I was like, literally, you're just throwing away money. Like, is, do I love it enough to just literally take 25, 30 grand out of my pocket and just throw it in the trash? Like, that's essentially what I would've been doing with the Jaguar F-Type. I love it, it sounds good, it rides well, it's fast, looks good, I think it's a head turner. I think it's a really nice car if you plan on keeping it for a long time. But because I knew I wasn't gonna keep it for a long time, partially because I don't trust Jags reliability. Um, it wouldn't have worked for me because I would have ended up shoveling out so much money to get out of it when it was time. So that one didn't work from a financial standpoint. And overall, um, it just wasn't a good financial buy. So that one was out. Um, next would probably be the, maybe the ZL one. I How about the GT, I would say the GTR. Would GTR, that GTR might be lower than F-Type. So the GTR, <laughs> Um, it's main plus for me was that it held its value really well. You know, you can buy a GTR today and sell it tomorrow for the same. Um, so it holds its value really well. Only thing I didn't like about it was the drive itself. Like, it was kind of boring. It was like, you feel like you're going fast, but it was like a boring type of fast. Like, I've seen a lot of reviews where people were like, it feels like you're playing a video game, and I was like, eh, I don't know how it can be, feel like that if you're going 120, but it literally does. Like, we were going pretty fast, and I was still kind of like, I looked at the speedometer, and I realized how fast I was going. I was like, wow, but I didn't have no emotion behind it. Like, the only thing that really evoked the emotion was the launch control. That was pretty much it. I was with him when he was in that one, and it pretty much, it just felt like, even just from a passenger's point of view, like, when you're in the Z, like you can attest to this, when, when you're riding in the Z, even as a passenger, when I hit it, it's like exhilarating, you know, mm -hmm. there's my, a whole my, sensation. My wife, be, my, my wife be hit me upside the head. Right. But like, in the GTR, when he hit it, like, I could have been over there making a sandwich. Yeah. Like, I was over there just half asleep, like, okay. Yeah. It's, it's there's a different for... sensation. In the Z06, when you hit the gas, there's a sensation. You feel the car down shift, and you feel the mechanic, you feel the mechanical things latching on and you hear the sounds and you feel the torque and all that's like a big sensation and that's what we do this for all of this is emotion i mean none of this is logical all of this is emotion that's what we do it for is for the emotion for the feeling for that smile it puts on your face and gtr honestly didn't make me smile very much it was like it was cool because it was a gtr and i get that a lot of people want them but i don't know it just it's you know what the gtr did important. you know how i would describe it what? it was gently going fast 
It was very gently. And I think that's because it's so capable that on the street, it's like you don't realize how fast you're going. Whereas if you're on a racetrack and actually lapping it and taking it around or, you know, timing your laps, then sure, you will see how fast it is, but who cares? It's like in the Z, like there's a leprechaun behind it kicking you every time, but in the GTR, it's like someone's gently blowing on you. Like, you remember when, when that dude blew in LeBron's face? Remember when they were <laughs> yeah, uh, when at the free throw line or something? Uh -huh. He was blowing on his ear. That's kind of what the GTR was. Like. Lance Stevenson, that's what it was. Yeah. It's, it's just... <laughs> I get that a lot of y'all like them, and a lot of y'all are not gonna like what I'm saying about the GTR, but, and also a lot of y'all probably haven't driven a GTR, but if you drive one, you may understand what I'm talking about, and for the simple fact that if you're not one of those people who has to assert your dominance and saying that I have a GTR, I'm faster than everybody else, if you're not one of those people, it's a pretty boring car. Um, so next on the list would probably be the ZL1. ZL1 was a high contender for a long time, simply because you get so much for the money. Like for only 60 grand, you get 650 horsepower, a really good 10 speed automatic, a, a good looking car. Um, the biggest issue I had with it was honestly, it was a Camaro, not a Camaro type of guy. And the interior was like super cramped. Like if you think the F type interior is cramped, the freaking interior in the Camaro, like literally, no exaggeration when I say this, my mom could not ride in the car. My mom is claustrophobic. So her even going to the store with me would have been an issue. And why would I buy a car that my mom, like, literally cannot ride with me in? Aside from the fact that the interior quality is still very subpar. Um, and again, its biggest benefit is that it was fast. And being that I don't really care how fast the car is overall. Like, I want some speed. Every car got like speed. But I don't need to be able to walk most of Atlanta. Like, that's not my thing. I'm not that guy. So, for me to buy a car based solely off how fast it is, doesn't make much sense for me. And then depreciation on ZL1s, I haven't seen their track record yet, so I don't know what it's gonna do, and I would rather be in something that I know holds its value a little bit better. The, the last gen one didn't do too bad. It didn't do bad, it didn't, but it, cause I guess it's so cheap, it doesn't have very far to fall. Whereas like you buy, you know, a $100,000 Jag, and it falls to 60, you're pissed. But if you buy a $60,000 ZL1 and it drops to 45, you're, you know, you're like, oh, okay. Um, so I guess it, it was cool. It was nice. I would definitely recommend it for someone who's looking into ZL1s. Like if you're looking at ZL1 versus Hellcat, definitely ZL1 all the way. Like no questions asked. If you can fit in it and if you can get over the interior, ZL1 all the way. And by the way, Tall Guy did the video on ZL1 and he couldn't fit. I remember. Oh, really? Like I went and watched yeah. that video after I sat in it because I was like, bro, that thing is cramped. I'm 5'4 on a good day. And I felt cramped in there. My wife is 5 nothing. You find you. I'm 5'4 on a good day. 5'3". Freaking, my wife is 5 foot even, and she felt cramped in there. She's like 14. And then his... You're overestimating the, these heights, <laughs> majorly. The salesman that was with us was probably, I think he told us he was like 6 even or something like that. And watching him get in the back seat of that car, I mean it literally took us like 10 minutes to get a car in the back, <laughs> the back seat. Like trying to climb up under the seat belt. It was just a hot mess, bro. It was like, other than being fast, it was so inconvenient. So I was just like, nah, nah I'm not dropping even though it's relatively cheap in the grand scheme of things i'm not paying 65 grand for something this inconvenient you know what i mean so i was like nah i'm not gonna do that biggest benefit with speed i don't care about speed like that um next was probably the we got the c63 the m2 c63 and m2 i put them about even so c63 I love that car. I always had a thing for AMGs. They sound good. They move. It's like German muscle. You get that German interior and refinement with that American car muscle feel. So I was like, that's pretty cool. So I looked into those pretty heavily. So the biggest issue with that is this, and follow my reasoning here. So C63 is on a recall right now. Takata airbag recall. Same recall that my M3 had on it. Took a year and a half to clear up. So what that means is that they can't certify them on a recall. So the very few that weren't affected by the recall are out there, but they're high priced because they're the only ones on the on the lots. Which means that once that recall clears up, that car you bought for 75 grand because it was the only one in the range is now amongst 50 others and its value drops from 75 to 55, just like that. So again, you've thrown away a significant amount of money. Okay, you say, well, just buy a new one. You don't have to worry about that. It's even worse. Cause if you buy a new one for 80, 90 grand, you go trade it in tomorrow for 60, dude. Like, they tank in value. You literally, I would literally be throwing money away. I would literally be going to my bank and being like, hey, give me 30 grand and flushing it down the toilet. And I, that, if, if that sounds good to you, you probably have way more money than me. Cause I'm not taking 30 grand and just throwing it away. 
Um, so that didn't work. I love, but I will say this: if you plan on keeping it long term, C63 probably would have been the one I would have went with. If I was gonna keep it long term, I would have done C63 for the simple fact that you can get crazy power, pretty reliably. It looks good, sounds good, all that good stuff. That wind would have been killing us right now. It would have been eating us up. Um, and then last, I get I put the M2 because honestly, it shocked the crap out of me. I didn't expect much from it. I drove it because it was there, and I was like, hmm. I told my wife, let's go drive an M2. Drove it. Handles great. Sounds pretty good. The power is more than enough for what you're going to need it for. Interior is kind of whack, but for the price, <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty cheap. Like, it's it's not an M interior. It's a 225 or 218 or whatever they call the crap now. It's a 2 Series interior. It's not a M4, M3 interior. So it's got that cheaper leather. I don't know what they call it, but it's got the cheaper leather. And it's just kind of whack. But it is only 50 grand. Certified pre-owned. And it holds its value pretty well. Honestly, the what ended up killing that deal for me was the dealership. I went in there, I got so tired of shopping for cars, I was like, look, I'm gonna buy this M2. I gave them a pretty fair offer on it, they didn't want to take it. I left, they called me back, they gave me an offer closer, it still wasn't what I wanted to pay for it. So I turned it down again. He was like, well look, you can't find any other M2s, you can't find any other used ones like this, you can't find any new ones, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, screw it, if y'all can't give me the deal I want, I don't care how many you can find, I'm out. So I started signing papers on the Cayman, they gave me a call, basically said that they had three used M2s and two new M2s after they just said they didn't have any. So I was like, basically, so y'all just made up a bunch of bulls to try to get me to buy that car on the spot. And it backfired on me. So that didn't work out because of that. Honestly, if daddy gave me the, the numbers I wanted, I'd probably be an M2 right now. Simple as that. But they didn't. And I'm glad that they didn't because now I have the Cayman. Um, was there anything else I looked at? All right. Um, what was I saying? So honorable mention, sorry the battery died. Yeah. Was the AMG GT? Yeah, AMG GT, same issue as the C63. Tanks in value. I8. Um, I8. Mm -hmm. Just it doesn't inspire me mm -hmm. for that type of money. You might look at something else. But you did like the uh, the, the joint with the camera engine in it. The Lotus Evora. I forgot about that one. Lotus Evora was cool. Um, only thing I only shared with that was um, I've heard a lot of horror stories as far as depreciation on a Lotus. Um, I've never heard of a good story of anybody trading the Lotus. Um, and overall, I didn't know enough about the brand or like it enough over the Cayman to venture out into a world I didn't know. Because I don't know enough about the Lotus Evora to say I would choose it over a Cayman. Like, arguably, the Cayman is as good or better. I mean, probably is better. It is better from a numbers perspective. And I have more of an attachment to this car. Like I said, this was more of an emotional purchase for me. Um, there's not much logic behind it other than depreciation factors. So, my heart said Cayman. I went with Cayman. As far as things I like about it, we'll get more into that on five things I love and, and the whole review. 911 was just too much money right now. I would have had to spend to get a 911 I want. I would have had to spend anywhere from I would have had to spend close to 110 to get a 911 that I would actually want right now. And um, you got it. I'm not trying to spend that right now because for 110 I might as well just hold off on it and just get a GT3 for 130. Yeah, for 110 on the 911, I was like, and then I would have had to go new because the 991.2 just dropped. So I would have lost money on that too. So for 110 and losing value, I would rather hop in this for 80 and ride out for a little bit, build some equity in it, and then slide into, you know, a 991.2 GTS or 991.2 or 991.1 GT3 or something like that, Turbo S, something like that. So that was a money thing. Um, I didn't want to make the payment on. You need to get one of them. <laughs> Central. I didn't want to make the payment on a car that I wasn't going to keep and that I didn't, you know, didn't really want like that. Which that was the most expensive. Um, I guess it's all the honorable mentions that I can think of. I drove everything, y'all. Camaro SS, everything. Like, literally everything. Bro. CTSVs, everything. And honestly, it just came down to my heart wanted to came in GTS. You even went to the range lot, didn't you? I did drive a range. <laughs> I drove a range. I drove everything, bro. And I'm going to just, if I, if you want to skip to a certain part of this video and figure out why I chose the Cayman, I'm going to put it like this. It's like jazz music. If you got to ask, it's not for you. Simple as that. If you really got to ask why I chose the Cayman, it's probably not your car. Because if you're going to look at it and be like, that's 80 grand, but for 80 grand, I can get a Z06. That'll walk that thing on the highway. If you're, if you're thinking that right now, the Cayman's not for you. Simple as that. The people who want a Cayman understand that they don't want a Hellcat. They don't want a Z06. They don't want a Z01. Porsche's sales have not been hurt by Corvettes and Camaro. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a different type of buyer here. People who want one, we, they understand that. People who don't, 
I can't I couldn't explain it to you in a video an hour long. I couldn't explain to you why I chose the Cayman over that stuff. If you're if you're that type of person, which there's nothing wrong with that. If you're that type of guy, that's not gonna my, this video is not gonna change your mind. So don't expect it. Overall, it's the it's the refinement, it's the way it holds its value, it's the entire experience of owning a Porsche. Like from the the moment you step in a Porsche lot, you know you've stepped into a different range. Like there are AMGs, don't get me wrong, there are AMGs, BMWs that cost just as much or more, but the customer service alone is so much different. Like, you go in a BMW lot, you may or may not get good service. AMG has given me horrible service, like, almost across the board. Um, but Porsche, like, every Porsche lot I've gone to, salesmen are on, the salesmen are on point, they look good, they know their product, they just... Overall, it's just such a such an elevated experience. When I bought the car, everything was flawless. Everybody was on point. Everybody did their job and knew their product. Customer service has been amazing. I had to take it back for a couple of little things I noticed here and there. Everything was fixed on the spot. They talked to me about cars. It was just such a great experience to, to fulfill a dream of mine to buy a Porsche. You know, I wanted one since I was a kid. So I'm glad that they were able to make this experience such a pleasant one. And overall, y'all know, I mean, like I said, if you know the car, you know the stats. It's mid-engine, it handles amazingly. It sounds ridiculous with the flat six being right behind your head. Um, it's just a really, really good car. And there's nothing I can say that could convince you other than go drive one. Once you've driven one, you'll understand. Simple as that. That's pretty much it. So that's why he did it. We got many more videos to come. This is D. Okay. No wheel drive 229. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And like and subscribe and share. And like and subscribe and, and do that, share. And do that too. And, and, and notification. Subscribe. Hit the, the notification bell so bell. you know when we post a video. Yeah. Because we got 5,000 subs, but only like 1,000 of y'all watch the video first day. Right. We want 5,000 people watching the video the first day. day. Within the first few hours, we want 5,000. Hit the notification bell. Right. But yeah, we got more stuff coming, y'all. It's going to be cool. It's going to be turned up. Drop some comments below, y'all, too. What y'all want to see. Um, I don't do much of the vlogging stuff anymore. Um, just kind of fell off of that part of it. I let D handle most of that now. But let us know what videos y'all want to see that it came in. And if I can get it up for you, I will. Um, what videos y'all want to see us doing. I love editing stuff. I love putting together nice montages. So let me know if y'all want to see just some montages of the Cayman and the Corvette right now. Or anything like that. Um, I want to see that. Say what? I want to see that. Okay. Okay. Them niggas. We may do that too. Um, anything that y'all want to see, let us know. Drop it in the comments below. I also drop below what you would have chosen and why. Um, because in that range of, you know about 80 85 grand what would you have chosen you got zero sixes you got zero ones you got f types you got caymans you got some older 911s you got i mean you got a lot of stuff in that range for 85 grand you can get it a lot of stuff is is at your is at your base so tell me what you would have chosen so yeah i wonder how many people would choose a came yeah i wonder so yeah everybody do this we want a lot of comments on this video everybody comment a what you want to see what videos you want to see about the cayman and comment B, if you have 85 grand, which car would you choose? What would you choose? Other than the Z06. Oh, for me? Yeah. If I couldn't get the Z06, knowing me, I probably would've got the i8 or the, uh, the F-Type. Don't me. Yeah. Throwing away a lot of money on the F-Type. <laughs> shoveling money in the flow, boy. <laughs> probably. Oh, or the, or the C63. Like yeah. that too. If you can keep it long enough, the C63 yeah. is probably the best buy. If you can keep it long enough to hold depreciation, you're good. Probably do that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of stuff's going on, apparently. I don't know if something's on fire. Y'all comment <laughs> below. D, Kyle, no doubt, 29.